Good morning, Kina. How Hi, are you? Millie. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How is Miss Kendall today? She's doing pretty good this morning. I'm actually surprised. She's been a little cranky, so yes, you have. She's telling me yes. <laughs> So, yeah, she uses her face to convey so much. She does. She does a lot of blinking with her eyes and the movement of her tongue. Um, and then at school, they're trying to get her to use her head her head, to, her head switch more so she can communicate that. Way. But she does a lot of eye and tongue. Okay. So we'll, we'll come back to you. She says we're boring. <laughs> Um, can you tell us a little bit about Kendall and her birth history? Um, I was actually full term with Kendall. I did have a couple complications during my pregnancy. I was borderline preeclampsia. So when Kendall was born, we had to do an emergency C-section for a failure to progress. So during that time, she had a stroke in utero. Um, so when Kendall was born, she was blue. She was not breathing. They had to resuscitate. Her app scores were pretty much zilch. Um, so we immediately put her on a cooling blanket, and she did that for 48 hours. They wanted to, to, to sustain any further brain damage. So we started off um, in the NICU for the first month of her life. Um, within the first three weeks, we had a G-tube and a missing fundy. Um, it took her about a week before she actually opened her eyes, but we knew that there was brain damage, and we knew that a, a lot of the damage was to the brain stem. So from there, you know, the majority of her diagnosis has been based off of that brain damage because it controls so much of everything. So we kind of started off on a rough start. Yeah, I would say um, sometimes men and women deal with things in a different way. Does Kendall's dad deal with his feelings in a different way than you do? I'll probably say that's an understatement. Um, he definitely deals with them differently. He's a lot more quiet um, with his feelings with her, but he hides them, I think, more. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, when she's really sick, it's very hard for him to deal with. Um, when she's, you know, he feels like she's not being paid attention to or treated right, he voices it, but he's very sarcastic. Mm -hmm. So he voices it kind of more so sarcastically. Um but when she's sick and hurt, it's very mm -hmm. difficult for him. So he deals with it very much so differently. But I'm learning, especially as she gets older, he talks to people more about Kendall, just different people, you know, that he works with or that he interacts with because he meets a lot of people that are somehow intertwined with either children with disabilities and special needs or adults with special needs. Most recently, um, one of the guys that he works with sometime, they have a daughter that just graduated from another county and they were having some issues and he asked me if I could talk to them and help them get some resources for their child. Mm -hmm. um, where he parks his truck when he goes to work, that family actually has been dealing with children with special needs for years, even to the point where the, the, the parents, the, their oldest son, very much so got ingrained in that, to that community and he actually works for a FODAC. Um, so whenever we need something, you know, Barbara is one of our biggest advocates. So I'm learning that he, he voices it a lot more to other people, more so directly to us. So maybe it's easier for him to talk to other people about it. Ah, I get some feedback. What I remember about Lacey is how he helped Kendall, like with her vision in sort of unusual way <laughs> and he, he and Kendall he taught Kendall to enjoy football yes and, and she they still love football uh, and basketball <laughs> so she would watch what did you say because you didn't really watch it then no much. so that was that was their their daddy daughter time I know I could disappear during football season I have my time yeah you would say that the little man ran across the green field yeah and Kendall can watch. <laughs> and he still gets the biggest response out of her vocal, the vocal eyes, when, mm -hmm. vocal eyes when she has her passing hair on. Because oh. he, he rough plays with Kendall. So. Which is good. It yeah. is. And she enjoys that. And that's who she vocalizes the most with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we all have dreams for our children before and after they are born. Did your dreams for Kendall change after her birth? They did. 
I think um, initially it's so much to sink in, so much to digest. And you always want, and you have dreams and aspirations of your child going to these, you know, great levels and doing so many things. And when Kendall was born with her disabilities, we had to figure out what she could and couldn't do, you know, physically and what her body won't allow her to do. Um, so initially, it, it was it was it's hard. Mm-hmm. It's a lot to swallow. Um, as she's gotten older, and you see the progression. You know, we just want the best life, best quality of life for Kendall for mm-hmm. what she can do. But we're learning that there is so much that she can do, um, even with her disabilities, with her deaf blindness, with her being in a wheelchair, and things like that. So we just we want her to have the best quality of life for herself. How did your friends react to the news about Kendall? Um, you know, everyone was very supportive. We do have a big support system, which is awesome. Um, some people are that better than others. Extended family, perhaps, as well? Extended family, as well. Um, with our families, both families were so used to dealing with um, people with special needs or taking care of family members or elderly, um, like my mother works in home health care, so she takes care of um, adult patients. Um, His mother and his aunt were taken care of. His grandmother, when he was born, she had Alzheimer's and was bedridden for 10 years. Um, Her brother is very adept to working with her and his great-grandmother before she passed away. So they were very receptive. Um, We had some friends that were very receptive. I have a good friend who's been on this journey with her own child. So she was very supportive. Then I have some friends who it's just a little bit harder for them to understand it. So they have kind of fallen more so, I guess, to the background. Um, Yeah. What were the hardest times and how did you cope during those moments? I think some of the hardest times are when she would get so sick. When Kendall was young, before we did the trach, before we did her trach out, I mean, Kendall would get sick, she would get pneumonia. I think we probably had maybe 10 to 11 episodes of pneumonia. And every time we would go in, we would be in ICU. We would have to put her on a ventilator, which means that she would have to be intubated. And it's just difficult as a parent when you feel like you can't help your child Mm -hmm. um, or you don't know what to do or what caused it. Um, And uh, getting through a lot of those times, um, for me, I prayed a lot. Um, the chaplain at the hospital will come up who actually, that chaplain at Scottish Rite actually knew the pastor at my church. So sometimes he would contact the pastor for us or contact the pastor. So I hope you don't mind. I just let him know. Mm -hmm. So that was very helpful. Um, Like I said, we have a good support network, but I have a girlfriend that has a special needs child and we were friends before either of us had kids. And she's been very helpful during those times because it's always helpful to have someone that can understand yes. exactly what you're feeling, exactly what you're going through. So if I call her and tell her, this is what they're saying, this is what they want to do, she understands exactly, one, as a parent how I feel, but also as a parent that has had a child in that situation. So she can say, no, they don't need to do that, tell them to do this, or you need to let them do it. So I got to get over it. <laughs> it's going to be okay. <laughs> What would you say to other parents about grief based on your experience? I remember, and it was, I think, I don't even know if Kendall was a year old. A friend of mine had found a post on Facebook that her mother shared with her about grief when you lose a child. Mm -hmm. And her mother told her that it's the same type of grief when you have a child that has special needs because you have to grieve that child that you didn't have. Mm-hmm. And when she said it, and I re- went back and reread it, and it made perfectly good sense. So you, ha- I really had to go through that phase of this wasn't, this didn't, but you have to accept it to let go of it. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of time as a parent with a child with special needs, you go through that, what could I have done differently? But as a parent, we have to let it go. Mm -hmm. to appreciate what we have and for a lot of people it's not easy Um, and it's not quick process you know timing is different for everyone and I think for me 
Kendall was probably almost two before I truly got to that point where I was like, okay, this, this isn't, and this what is, mm -hmm. you know, she's not going to do this. She's not going to do that. It's not going to change overnight, but you really have, you have to go through the process. And I think a lot of parents fight it. Well, don't you, that's probably normal too, though. It to is. It. it is. I can tell you that I remember <clears throat> coming and I didn't know that part of it. I didn't know that you had worked through that. But I remember coming and watching you one day and thinking, whoa, when did she become so empowered? <laughs> it was almost from one visit to the next. And you were very moving forward, very empowered, and it was a different attitude than before. And it, it really is, and uh, one of the things, and I tell everybody this um, about Georgia Pines, but about you, once we got the diagnosis of Kendall's, we knew that we knew the hearing loss was there, mm -hmm. um, and we knew the vision would come and go, but once we got those diagnoses and truly understood mm -hmm. what we were working with, it was a game changer for us as a family. Yeah, I think because so. it broke so many barriers for us and our child. But then it also allowed us the opportunity to invite other people into Kendall's world, and that was just a game changer. And I think that that was so important. And to me, the grieving process is kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. Once you get it and move forward, it's a game changer. Um, Kendall wasn't brought into our lives because it was something that Kendall asked for, but I, I really believe she was brought into our lives because it was something that we needed to learn about us or it was something that God wanted us to give other people. Well, and she gives other people. She does. Mm -hmm. She really does. But, you know, I just really, you know, I enjoy reaching out to other parents and giving other parents resources and information because it's, it's just so helpful. It's so enlightening. So for us, that's been very important. Even with Kendall transitioning into the school system, her school team, we all work together. Mm -hmm. You know, um, with her private therapies, we talk about what she's doing at school. Um, at school, I talk about what she's doing with her private therapies. And in some ways, we try to incorporate what we can within everyone's bounds and their limits and everyone's staying in their lane. But it truly takes a village. Yes. And it's important that everyone understands that therapies affects the other piece. Yes, yes. And that was one of the things that I think that was so helpful, like when you would schedule your visits when one of the therapists was here because they would ask, okay, well, what is she doing or vision-wise or hearing-wise? And I needed them to understand, you know, the, 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 the knowledge and the concept behind the it, picture. the big picture. And it made such a difference. And we just carry that through even with school. You know, everyone works together as a team you know when we sit down and write her goals when we look at what is she doing in the classroom and what isn't working everyone adjusts and that has been tremendous how is your grief different now than it was in the beginning i think now we're um you know we've accepted it we, we've moved on mm -hmm. um so I, I think that's the big difference now you know in the beginning it's still so new and it's so much going on that you're like in this cloud <laughs> You're in this cloud of smoke and you're like, okay, I don't know which way is out. And the level of fatigue, that's what I remember my yes. first visit here was how tired, it was physically exhausting. tired you were. It was exhausting. The other thing I learned, which you probably didn't know, at that time, I actually, well, later they diagnosed me with underactive thyroid disease, which probably um, yeah. occurred during pregnancy or post-pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my fatigue and exhaustion was just because you get exhausted as a parent caring for the child that you forget yes. about you. Yes. So I think that's important for parents yes. to take time for you <laughs> because once important. you get worn down, you're no good for your child. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn to do better with self-care, definitely. Easier said than done, right? Very much so. <laughs> What tips would you give to new parent advisors as they start to work with families who are just beginning this journey? When families are just beginning this journey, we're still really unsure of what we need. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. 
And so sometimes we seem either standoffish or kind of we have that deer in the headlights look because it's so much coming at us at one time that we just don't know what to think or do. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say um, pack your patience <laughs> because it may take a couple of times that you have to say the same thing before we finally hear it or it clicks. Mm -hmm. um, I would definitely say, and I think you kind of experience this sometimes in our house, sometimes our house is a revolving door. <laughs> we have nurses, we have therapists, we have parent advisors, we have social workers, you know, there's so many people in and out that there are some days that we're just like barely physically there, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that we don't welcome you and what you have to offer. But I would definitely say uh, pack your patience to know it's, it's a journey. It's a journey for the family and for the parent advisor too, because you have yes. to build that bridge and that relationship. And I think that was one of the things, you know, Kendall, once she took to you, you know, she... Kendall would look forward to your visit. And mm -hmm. if it was a week or a time when you weren't coming, she would kind of be like, well, what do you mean? This is, this is my normal time. Okay, what are a couple of tips, and you already told one, for new parents of children who face particular challenges, and you said make time for yourself, recoup, yes. anything else? Write it down. Write it down. There are yes. so many things that you will hear, that you will think of. Keep a little notebook. You know, it doesn't have to be real expensive. It doesn't have to be elaborate. So, you know, I was good about putting stuff in my phone after a while. Mm -hmm. Because at that moment, I may think about it. Or I may have this question or say, oh, she did this. This is kind of different. Mm -hmm. But by the time you have that appointment or you have that session, you may forget. So write it down. There were times like when you and I when we first got her hearing diagnosis, we didn't know if we were going to do cochlear implants. We didn't know if we were going to do hearing aids. So we were getting a lot of information. And by the time I went to the audiologist, I was able to kind of come back and go through my material and look at what questions I had for her and why this or why this would work versus why it would not. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say write it down. I would definitely say take time for yourself. And sometimes you, you have to take that time out. Mm -hmm. from your child um, and we kind of learned that the hard way but I used to put Kendall's monitor on her and put her in her room in her bedroom in her bed for like 20 minutes by herself and I would just sit I might watch TV I might take a 20 minute nap I might just have a glass of wine yeah but sometimes I just had to step away to be able to come back how has Kendall surprised you what are some achievements of hers I think one of the things that she definitely has achieved, and it's, it's kind of ironic, but Kendall is, through everything she goes through, she's happy and she's smiling. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this with her therapist the other day. You know, they said it's hard to believe that she just had surgery such a short time ago, and it was such an extensive surgery because she doesn't act like she just had surgery. She still laughs. She still smiles. She's still happy. Um, you know, we're just totally excited about the fact that with her vision, it's getting stronger. Mm -hmm. um, her hearing is, is there too. Um, she's still very selective. That hasn't changed much. <laughs> but she does respond more consistently with a lower tone mm -hmm. pitch. So we've learned that. Um, so, so now we kind of know, okay, this is how, how to get that response out. So just being able to take those little pieces, it's been wonderful. Um, she does move her legs a little bit more now than she yeah. used to. Um, she likes to stomp when she's mad. Hasn't done it much <laughs> since surgery, but, <laughs> but she likes right to stomp <laughs> when she's mad. And at night before we put her in her, her wedge and her knee, her knee immobilizer, she likes to tuck her legs up under her Indian style to sleep. So I know that's wow. when she's like really comfortable. She'll fold up Indian style and she'll just. <laughs> so, that's different. Too. It is. You know, just, just those little things are, you know, are milestones for uh -huh. her. Um, so those achievements are just awesome. So, you know, she can go to school all day and she tolerates that well and she enjoys it and she is alert and active in school. So. 
we're just ecstatic about this. Yeah, every day you see more. Yes. Well, Kina, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Oh, thank you, Nellie. And so, um, over and out, Georgia Pines. <laughs>